Paul, please. Look, you're not even thinking. You haven't slept. We've got to find some other way. No, 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 I thought about that. Too many things could happen. One, if we die. Daddy! Please listen, I'm trying to understand. Understand? My daughter's life's at stake. Your daughter? What's she got to do with it? Your son's going to kill her. I told you, I don't have a son. Julie. This is my wife, Karen. Hello. I'm Winston Essex. Welcome to Mansfield House. Well, this book is a new addition to our library here. It's about the meaning of dreams. You know, I've often marveled at the extraordinary shape and size and variety of dreams. Those elusive glimpses of things that go bump in the night. And like you, I've wakened in the clutch of a cold fear of something that I can only half remember. Perhaps the stuff of dreams is merely the unfinished business of conscious being taken up by the subconscious, even as we sleep. But could there be more? Could there be some absolutely astonishing hint of things that have not yet happened? And you walk in terror knowing that somehow, and at any cost, you had to keep that terrible thing from happening. Crap! 
smash it up. <laughs> yeah. Hey, do you know how much I love you, punk? Bigger than the sun and moon and all the planets. That's right. Even bigger. <laughs> Daddy? Mm hmm? Does everyone have to die? Well, why do you ask that, Em? Susan said it's true. Well, yes, it is. Then who will live in all the houses? <laughs> well, we don't all die at once. Daddy? Hmm? Is Mommy gonna take me to her house next week? Yes, she is. But my birthday is tomorrow. Well, I tell you what, I think Mommy might just send you a present through the mail like she did last year. I hope it's a doll. <laughs> Look, a merry-go-round. Yes, Sam, yes, sir. I'm all right. I'm all right. Daddy's all right. Did you have another bad dream, Daddy? Yes, I'm uh, afraid so. Emily, where did you get that? Mommy sent it to me for my birthday. The mailman said it was for me. I opened it while you were sleeping.
Emily likes your picture there. It's a poor substitute for a mother six months out of the year. Well, it's, uh, it's better than battering her back and forth every couple of weeks like a ping pong ball. I suppose so. It's just that it's very hard to be without her for so long. Is she almost ready? Yeah, she just wants to wear that new dress I bought her. It's her favorite color. Are you going on a trip? Yes. You are taking time off from work? Mm-hmm. That's unusual for you. It must be very important. It is very important. Karen, I, uh, I probably shouldn't even bother telling you this, but I think you have a right to know. I've, uh... I've had some dreams. Again. I, I know you think I'm a little bit mad even without the dreams. Well, you have to admit you are a little bit eccentric for a corporate attorney. There are plenty of intelligent people who believe in premonitions. Well, Paul, I guess I just belong with the dummies who don't. Karen, I might have saved my own father's life if I hadn't ignored the warnings I had five years before he died. I didn't do anything. And that... that plane crashed just as I saw it in every detail. Well, I've seen something else, and I'm not just going to stand by and watch Emily. Emily? Oh, Paul, that's sick. It doesn't matter whether or not you believe me. I know what I've seen. Paul, it's these obsessions of yours that ruined our marriage. If you keep this up, it's going to ruin your whole life. You can go on believing it's nonsense if you want to. But I'm going to Dale Haven, Wyoming. And I'm going to find some way. Some way to save Emily's life. No matter how long it takes or what it takes. Is there someone here I can see about getting a room? Oh, well, I do. My father owns the place. The name's Julie Barnes. Oh, Paul Dover. Nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you, too. This way. Hey, will you be staying long? Well, I'm, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, a week or so, anyway. Seems like a nice, quiet town. <laughs> it's Dale Haven, all right. If it's quiet you want, you've come to the right place. <laughs> well, actually, I could use a job of some kind. Uh, sort of running low on funds. Well, what kind of work do you do? Oh, almost anything. But I'd, uh... Well, I'd prefer something where I could meet the people around here, get to know them. Have you ever worked on cars? Yes, I have. Well, other than this place, my father owns a garage in town. He's been looking for someone to help him. That sounds perfect. Yeah, after you get settled, I'll tell you where it is. Is this okay for $12 a week? That's just great. Thanks, Julie. You're very welcome. See you later.
Go on believing it's nonsense if you want to. But I'm going to Dale Haven, Wyoming. And I'm going to find some way. Some way to save Emily's life. No matter how long it takes or what it takes. Yes? This phone call for you. For me? Well, they said Paul Dover. The phone's at the bottom of the stairs. Just a second. Did you sleep well? Yeah, just fine. Hey, how about some breakfast? Bacon and eggs, okay? Yeah, that's great. I'll, uh, I'll be there in a minute. Okay. Hello? Paul, it's Karen. Karen? How'd you find me? Well, there are only two boarding houses in one hotel in Dale Haven, and you weren't at the others. Is Emily all right? Paul, Emily's fine. But something's happened, and I... I had to call you. I tried to dismiss it as something that my mind just cooked up because of what you told me, but I couldn't do that. Well, what happened? I had a dream like the ones that you've been having. Tell me about it. Well, there was this young woman lying on the ground, and she looked a lot like Emily might look someday. Go on. There was something in the background, and it... it looked like horses. Carousel horses? Yes, how did you know that? Emily was riding a carousel horse in my dream, and she was shot. What else, Karen? Anything else? Well, she was crying out to me. She was saying, help. Help me. That's all? Well, no, there was something else. But, Paul, I don't know what it means. What, Karen? What was it? At the cradle foot. That was it. At the cradle foot. Paul, I'm frightened. I, uh, I replaced it. Not bad for a college graduate. <laughs> Sticks out all over you, son. Bet you haven't had grease on those hands in quite some time. There's nothing to be ashamed of. If you can fix a water hose, you're all right with me. Uh, thanks, Mr. Barnes. You and Julie hit it off pretty good. Too bad she's about to tie the knot. Well, she's getting married? I didn't know. I wish you weren't. He's a fast-talking, self-made joker like me. Well, what's the matter with that? Nothing. If you like ending up with a boarding house in a garage at age 57, not bad, but a little education, it might have been a lot better. Better fellow like you doesn't say a greased monkey all his life. Well, I can't say it isn't serving a purpose. I'm gonna get this car back to Mr. O'Brien. I promised you four six.
You know someone here in town named uh, Rayfield Norris? Rafe Norris? Sure, I know him. You know where I can find him? Park at Edge of Town. Uh, thanks. So, uh, see you tomorrow. Right. Excuse me. Yeah. You interested in a ride? Uh, no, thanks. I'm, uh, I'm looking for someone. A fellow named Rachel Norris. You found him. You? Yeah, that's right. But you're not the same as in the courtroom. You're, you're older. I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm Rachel Norris. What's this all about? Oh, it's, uh, it's kind of difficult to explain. You don't have a son, do you? Oh, you're some kind of census taker. Just tell me, do you have a son? No, I don't have a son. I'm not even married. Yes. Give me about a week, though. Karen. See what happens when you leave your door unlocked? All kinds of strange people can just walk right in and make themselves at home. What are you doing here? Is, uh, is Emily all right? Well, Emily's fine. I left her with my mother. Uh, I thought maybe I could help you. Then you believe me. You believe it could happen. Paul, I don't know, but if there's a possibility, even the slightest possibility... Well, there's more than that. More than just a possibility. Well, then we have to forget our differences and try and work this thing out together. The clue of our destiny lies at the cradle foot. 
You found out what it was? Yes, an inscription on the courthouse. Wait, in this town? No. Inside. And in an empty courtroom, in my mind, like in the dreams, I saw a man named Raphael Norris being sentenced for the murder of our daughter. You saw it? Yeah, clear as day. I found out where Norris was and went to talk to him. I, I discovered he isn't the same man I saw in the courtroom. He's, he's a murderer's father. Paul, I, I don't understand. Karen, listen. Emily's five years old. If the killer is younger when it happens, then now, in the present, he... he hasn't been born yet. And he won't be born either until... Until those two people get married and she gives birth to Emily's murderer. Paul, what can we do? Somehow, some way, we have to prevent the birth of their son. Where's Julie? She's getting dressed. We're going out to dinner. Listen, I, uh, I know my questions must have seemed strange to you earlier. Did you get it all straightened out? Oh, well, more or less. Uh, not the man I thought you were. <laughs> well, that's a relief. It's, you could help me solve a problem, a very serious problem. How so? Uh, do you believe in uh, premonitions? You mean, uh, like hunches on a horse no, race? No, no, more than that. Situations of life and death that happen just the way people see them in uh, dreams, visions. It's a little deep for me. They do happen, Mr. Norris, believe me. My own father died just the way I'd visualized it earlier in a dream. Well, what's that got to do with your problem? Everything. Look, I know this may be hard for you to accept, but I know something terrible is going to happen in the future. Something that has to do with your son, Raphael Norris, Jr. Look, I told you, I don't have a son. He hasn't been born yet, but he will be. Well, I've had about enough of this. Please, please listen. Now, try to understand. Understand what? You're not making any sense. Then give me a chance. My daughter's life's at stake. Your daughter? What's she got to do with it? Your son's going to kill her. You flipped out, mister. You need help. Please, please listen to me. I've seen something, something tragic that I know is going to happen if I don't act to prevent it. Now, if you could just accept what I'm saying for the moment, just for the moment. Well, what do you want me to do about it? You think twice about marrying Julie Barnes. Marrying Julie? Or anybody else until I can figure out an alternative. I get the whole picture now. You got to think for Julie yourself. No, 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 please listen. You stay away from her, you hear? Something in your eyes that, that isn't there when you look at him. Well, then you're not looking close enough. Maybe closer than you think. Julie, you've, you've been on my mind ever since I first saw you. I, I think I've been on your mind, too. Oh, yes, I wondered about you. No, it's more than wonder. Stronger than that. Paul, Paul, there's no point to this. But Julie, you can't do it. You can't marry a man you don't love. But you're wrong. I love him. But you can't, Julie. You can't love him. Now, listen to me. Believe what I'm saying. You have to love me. You have to go away with me. I told you to stay away from her. We're getting married. Not if I can help it. You can help it.
Julie, Julie, you can't marry him. I can't let you. Please, Paul, this is only a rehearsal. Please go away. The wedding isn't until Sunday. Oh. Get out of here. Get out! No, Ray, don't! It's wrong. Wrong to save Emily's life? Well, but not, not that way, not by taking We're somebody else. responsible. They're the ones who are going to spawn a killer. Stop them. Paul, please. Look, you're not even thinking. You haven't slept. Look, we've got to find some other way. Oh, no, no, I've thought about that. Too many things could happen. One if we die. One if we die and Emily's all alone and no one knows or believes.
Feeling better? How can I feel better knowing? Knowing what? That you're not a killer? Most men would kill. Save the life of someone they love. Maybe. Maybe in the, the awful moment when it's happening, but not in cold blood, Paul. No one with any sense of decency could do that. Well, then we're helpless. Just helpless. Well, at least some good came out of it. What good? Well, I think maybe we found each other again. We can work it out, Paul. Everything. All we need is some time. Yes. Time. I'm, uh, I'm gonna go back to the hotel now. Uh, Karen, you can stay here with me if, uh, if you want to. Yeah. I admire you, Paul. I admire you for loving Emily so much. thinking very clearly either, Paul. You know, you were right in everything you said about me. I don't love Rafe. I don't think I ever did. Although I did try to convince myself. Paul, I think I'm really in love with you. I tried not to let it happen, but it did. When I saw you at the park, and then at the church, caring so much about me and, and wanting me so badly, I, I couldn't hide it from myself any longer, Paul. I knew I wanted you, too.
Well, they're not holding. It's just a routine hearing. Quite a few people testifying. I acted in self-defense. <sighs> it's been a nightmare. I know. Sometimes I haven't been sure when I was asleep or when I was awake. But Paul, look. I mean, it's over now. Don't you see you were right? We can change our destiny. It can't ever happen the way that we saw it. Karen, I've got to tell I you. I know. Paul, I know that whatever you did, you did for Emily. I know you didn't really want to go away with her. No, I didn't. I didn't. Then we can leave here. We can go home. And you and Emily and I can pick up our lives together. What do you want? I have to talk to you, Julie. Look at you free. They said it was self-defense. So why don't you go away and leave me alone? Julie, I, I thought it was I thought it was finished over. I I thought we were safe. <laughs> I mean <laughs> you thought. <laughs> I loved you. Oh, you are stupid. I never loved you. Never. I used you. It was just an act. Just an act I used you to get Rafe to come back to me. See, after the... after the wedding rehearsal, I... I told him I was pregnant. I told him that I was going to have his baby. I thought he'd be happy. He was furious. He said I was trying to force him into marriage. That I didn't care about him. I told him it wasn't true. But he wouldn't believe me. He said the marriage was off, that it was through. So I went crazy, I went out of my head, and then I thought of you. I thought maybe that I could make Rafe jealous, make him change his mind. You want to know something? He did change his mind. He came after me. 
And he wanted me. And you killed him. And I'm going to have his baby. what you've already done. What you've caused these people who never even realized what was happening. Look, even though it was self-defense, if you'd never come here, it never would have happened. You've caused a death. Don't you see, you took away the man that Julie was gonna marry. You made her fall in love with you, and you... you even promised her life together. Well, what about Emily's life? All we have to do is stay alive just 20 years. 20 years to save Emily. Well, we can do it. Together, we'll find some way. To sleep, perchance to dream, Shakespeare said. Well, there's no way we can avoid sleep, so dreams must come. I hope that yours will be pleasant ones. And now, here are some scenes from our next adventure on Ghost Story. <laughs> 